Hey what's up guys, it's Levi here and welcome to another video on the Team Gullit channel where in this video I will tell you guys the best settings in FC25. We've got this question multiple times and it's time to show you the best settings in FC25. So let's not wait too long and let's just get started with the controller settings. So for the controller settings, my preset is on competitive. Obviously I'm a pro player, so it's a must. Then there's a topic that we speak about a lot nowadays, which is precision shooting. Me personally, I don't really mind it, but if I was not a pro or not planning to go pro this season, I would recommend to have it off. Because as you can see in this clip, you can really mess up your chances because of it. It can be really hard to aim sometimes. There are not many benefits of it, although that it is really hard. So it might be good for the pros to have it involved. It's still debate. I think in some ways it's good, in some ways it's bad. Because creating a chance is hard enough already in my opinion. So I think you should be rewarded for already creating the chance. And then if you slightly miss aim it, it goes on the post or next to the goal. I don't really know what to think about it. But let's head on where we have time finishing on as always. True pass assistance is on semi. Same goes for lob true pass also on semi. Then we have ground pass assistance is on assisted. Cross assistance also on assisted. Lob pass assistance also on assisted. Then we have pass receiver lock. I really recommend this setting to be on late. This means that if you play a pass, but last moment you want to switch to a player, it is still possible. If you have it on early, the pass you play will always be given. So you don't have time if your reaction speed is quick to just change it up. If you see your opponent is predicting the pass, he's going to intercept it, that you can change it. I would really recommend to have it on late. Then precision pass sensitivity is on normal, nothing changed. Clearance assistance on directional. This means that for example, your opponent has a corner, you try to clear the ball, it goes the way you aim. So not just randomly, but the way it clears is directional. So it says it itself. And if you have this setting changed to automatic, it will just go anywhere. So you don't have the control of it. And obviously that's not what we want. Then defending, another topic that has been spoken about a lot especially previous year. I play on advanced defending. I don't know if I would recommend it because I think it's a bit harder. A lot of people play on tactical defending. This one is just all about personal preference, I would say. Then pass block assistance is on on. Auto switching is on air balls and loose balls only. Auto switching move assistance is on non. Right stick switching is on classic. Right stick switching sensitivity is on 5. This one also doesn't really matter. I don't feel the difference between 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. I don't really feel the difference. I just put it up in the middle on 5. It's alright. Next player switching is classic. Reaction time modifier is off. I don't really know if it's true. But I hear a lot of people say that if you have this on, the delay in the menus is a lot more than if you have it off. I didn't really feel that much of a difference, but I would just recommend to have it off. We all don't know what it benefits you if you have it on. So I don't know why we should have it on. Last year's, it wasn't there. Just put it off is what I would recommend basically. Player lock, obviously on. We need to use the player lock. One of the best mechanics since it is introduced to EAFC or FIFA, whatever you want to call it. Safe assistance is on assisted. Analog sprint is off. This means you don't need to fully press your R2 to be able to sprint. If you have analog sprint on and you press your R2 just a little bit, he will also run a little bit and not full speed. When I run, I want my player to run fast forward as fast as he can. So analog sprint should be off. Trigger effects off and user vibration feedback is also off. That's it for the controller settings. I know you guys are curious for my camera settings. So let's jump on over to my camera settings. My camera settings has not been changed since previous years. I play on telebroadcast, default, nothing changed. Power shot zoom, also personal preference. I have it off. Because otherwise, if my opponent performs it, I will also get the zoom. And I don't really like that. For the camera settings, it's nothing too special. Just telebroadcast. I know a lot of people also play co-op. Also a good choice in my opinion. I'm just used to telebroadcast. Then, last for the settings, we also have graphics mode this year. I don't really know what it is, but I would just recommend to leave it as it is. Because what it says, enhanced visuals. This mode provides enhanced lightning, adding ray. 
traced ambient occlusion and additional graphic features by adjusting resolution. This basically says it is the best resolution and the best graphical features possible. So I would recommend to have this on. If you switch to favor resolution, it says this mode provides standard lightning without adding graphical features and only adjust resolution during cutscenes. So this basically says it has one kind of graphic feature, it doesn't change, doesn't go to the maximum possible. Obviously we want to have the best graphics possible, I think. So I would recommend to have the first option. I don't think it really matters. I would just leave it out. The game decided how it was and that is enhanced visuals. So yes, guys, that's basically it for the settings. The controller settings are obviously personal preference. Same goes for the camera settings and the graphics mode. We don't know too many about it. I would just leave it how it is. If you have other settings which you really like, let us know down below in the comments. Also let us know which video you want to see next. One thing I have to say, these settings are also perfect for Rush. Watch our last video about Rush. We will teach you everything you need to know about the game mode in that video. One thing I can say is that the mode is really fun to watch and to play. I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe on our channel. Put your thumbs up on this video. And I see you guys next time. Ciao.